is Kiwi actor Carlo Bunn feared he'd missed out on the chance to be part of New Zealand movie making history. But now he and Three News ring lord Belinda Henley are preparing for tomorrow's world premiere. I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. It's the role Carlo Bunn didn't dare dream about. A part in Lord of the Rings and a chance to work with Peter Jackson. And just, just yell, to the king, to the king, uh, as if you're rallying the guys to help save his life, you know, it's okay. like, you know. Urban plays Aomir in the Two Towers. For him, it was the call-up of a lifetime. Six months after they had started filming, I got a call saying, would you like to be in Lord of the Rings? And, I mean, you know, I, I, thought, I thought I'd missed the boat. I thought that there was no way it was going to happen. And so, you know, I mean, I, I was ecstatic. and My feet didn't touch the ground for a week. They have now, and Urban is currently travelling the world promoting the film. For me, the most important thing is to um, just really enjoy this. This is a special time, and it's, it's, a film, uh, it's a film series that I'm really proud of. And, you know, I feel really privileged to be in such esteemed company. And, and you know, I'm just going to go to the premieres and, and uh, do the press and enjoy it. That's delicious. The role of Aemir came to Urban following his acclaimed performance in Harry Sinclair's The Price of Milk. Sinclair is a friend of Peter Jackson's and took him an early copy of the film. It was the best favour a friend could ask for. Really it was the ultimate film experience. I don't know if it gets any better than that. Uh, not only due to the, the, uh, the uh, quality of the material that you're working with, but also the, um, the depth of talent of the people you're collaborating with. Urban seems both unfazed and uninterested in the international profile the two towers will give him. It's almost certain to set his career on a whole new path. Already he starred in one American blockbuster, a thriller right. called Ghost Ship. Gold. He says working Hollywood Gold. style was a very it's different a experience. There. It was very laid back. Um, working with Gabriel Byrne was lovely. He was just a, a gentleman, uh, very generous, very supportive. Um, you know, and it was, uh, you know, uh, kind of quite lovely just being on the Gold Coast for four months in the peak of their summer. The Two Towers opens in theatres around the world on December 18th. Belinda Henley, 3 News. Belinda, who's starring in the dynamic role of Rohan warrior Aum, uh, Ioma, is uh, New Zealander Carl Urban. Does an elf, a man, and a dwarf have in the rid of Mark? Speak quickly! Tell us about Aemer, your character. Aemer is the uh, third marshal of the writers of the rid of Mark. He's the nephew of King Theoden. Very high up in the world of uh, Rohan. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a fierce warrior. Yeah. Uh, but he's also, he's quite cluey. He's got a lot of insight. He sees what's happening in the, uh, in the international environment of Middle Earth. He suspects that Saruman is no longer an ally of Rohan, but indeed has evil designs upon it. Uh, Rohan is kind of sandwiched in between these two towers, Orthanc and Barador. And, um, you know, it's his job to protect Rohan. And he sees the outlying villages coming under attack. And he goes to the king and he tries to warn him that, uh, you know, potential genocide is about to happen. Um, but unfortunately, the king has been rendered into a catatonic state by Saruman. Very heavy. And, uh, and ultimately this leads to frustration for Aemir because there's nothing that he can actually do about it, so he has to take matters into his own hands. So you take control? Uh, I don't take control, but I essentially go out there and fight them off. To the king! To the king! Yeah! A lot of horse riding. Big horse people. A lot of horse riding. I think that was one of the more challenging aspects about this film. Um, you know, Aemer is, you know, a, a, an amazing horseman, so I had to spend literally about two months, two hours a day, uh, five days a week, just trying to get to the level that, that, that he was at, so that I wouldn't have to think about what the horse was doing or hitting marks, that I could go in there and just concentrate on the moment-to-moment -moment reality of the yeah, yeah. scene. So you could act, you know, and do your stuff. Um, while riding the horse. That's right, that's right. And look like you were knew exactly Look what, like you know what you're doing, mate. In all kinds of weather, too. I mean, particularly this film, you know, with all kinds of landscapes, dramatic landscapes, difficult to work in. 
Oh, sure. I mean, I think one of the most challenging was probably when we shot down in Edoras. And, you know, there you are in the middle of this glacial valley with, like, parallel mountains running down either side of you. And, you know, it's freezing cold in the morning. When, it, when it's windy, the sand blows up and bites you in the face. And, um, you know, but you ask yourself, would you rather be anywhere else in the world? No. No. Would you rather be waiting tables here? No. no. And we turned up to one day, and, and actually we'd been filming on that set all week, and it had been beautiful, golden tussock, green hills. We turn up one day, and it's covered in snow. Yeah. What do you do? And Pete just says, okay, well, we'll set the camera up here, we'll melt the snow. And I was just like, <laughs> what? But then literally, like, half an hour later, there's like 30 guys out there with heaters melting the snow. Peter was unflappable. I've never ever worked with a director who was um, so in command of his craft and yet such just a calm, lovely, amiable guy. Relaxed but knows what he wants. Relaxed but specific, you know. I mean, yeah. I never actually had any, um, you know, big sit-down discussions with Peter saying, okay, this is the character and this is how his, uh, his psycholo psychology would be, you know, and it was none of that. It was, he, he hires you to do a job and you turn up and you do it, and from there it's just minor tweaking and specifics. You could turn around at some stage in the middle of, of, of everything and just, just yell, to the king, to the king! I was on the set one day, you know, as a matter of fact, um, I played an orc. I saw you. Oh, mm -hmm. what, on the day? I saw you on the day, mate. Yeah. It was very hard work putting so that big rope. black eyes. That's right. Mm -hmm. But the orc costume, you know, I mean, it's very, uh, like, close and hot and hard work. What was your costume like? Yeah, I mean, I was under a ton of armour. I mean, I had a layer yeah. of leather, a layer of chain mail, then a big leather uh, armour on top of that. Uh, a, a shield, a helmet, a sword. Yeah. So when you try and walk, you just about keel over. I mean, the yeah. first time I put it on, I was swaying, you know. But that dictates how your character moves. You know, you can't help but have good posture. You can't help but feel like a fierce warrior when you've got that on. I would cut off your head, dwarf. If it stood but a little higher from the ground. Who did you go on with best? You know, of all the running characters, I mean, who did you get on with best? Who did you, well, see the most, respect the most? I probably liked and respected Vigo the most, I think. Um, yep. Vigo Mortensen. I think when, when I wasn't working, I would, you know, I'd stand on set and, you know, and watch, watch the filming. And, you know, he's an actor who's just in complete command of his craft. He would come in take after take and just, just give a slight, subtle difference of inflection, exploring the scene and yet also at the same time giving his director the luxury of choice. Mm. Uh, you know, just to work uh, with someone like that, to, to watch him and to learn from him is, you know, it, you, you can't put a dollar value on that sort of experience, you know. Watching Pete Jackson and directing this multi-million dollar production every day sitting there with seven monitors in front of him, not only directing the unit in front of him, but directing three.